The use of handheld can be a really great tool within your toolbox. Today, I wanna to show you how you can create a real handheld preset within Final Cut Pro. Also, I created a special plugin that I'll be giving away to you for free at the end of this video, so stick around. Okay, so in motion, we're just gonna come over to a Final Cut effect, and we're gonna let our frame rate just sit at 29.97, and let's go ahead and set our duration for something like 10 seconds. From there, we are going to import our footage that we will be tracking. So go ahead and push Command I or go up to File, Import. From there, we are going to select the footage that we want to import. So we'll just import that. All we are going to do is track this footage and copy the tracking data over to our effects source here. Real quickly, let's go ahead and find where this video actually starts because sometimes when you start the camera up, you kind of get a little bit of a camera shake right at the beginning there. So we'll come to about frame 92. We're gonna push I for in and that will cut the clip to length. And we will just check and see if at the end here, it, the framing matches up pretty closely, which is really helpful. Another tip, you could do Command D to duplicate. You could drag the second one to the very end, go to your inspector properties and set your opacity to 50%. And you can see that they match pretty closely. Um, and that's just important for making this as seamless as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that duplicated one now that we know that the, the framing is pretty close. And we are going to select our light handheld footage, go up to our behaviors, motion tracking, analyze motion. And that will create this red marker dot here. And we are just going to select the top left corner and we'll come over to um, our behaviors and add an additional tracker and we'll set that to the bottom right hand corner. And then we are just going to push analyze. Now this will take some time, especially if you have a slower computer. Okay, so that is all done. Now all we need to do is come to our effect source and we're going to add behaviors, motion tracking, match move. And we're just gonna drag our analyze motion to this well here. Now we are just gonna enable the rotation in addition to the position. And if you really want, you could add scale as well. However, I like to leave that one unchecked. Okay, so now if we look through the frame, we can actually see how well this tracked. And it looks like the effect source is matching perfectly with what's happening in the video. So we are off to a really great start. The next step is really important because when you apply this effect, if you apply it to a really long clip, um, it's going to slow down the motion drastically to fit that on your timeline. Or if you are on a really short clip, like a one second clip, this is going to shorten this 10 second version down to one second. So the motion will be really fast and jarring. So we're gonna come to the very last frame. We are going to push Shift and M and that will create this green marker here. It might be a different color for you. Go ahead and double click that marker. Go up to Type and set it as the Project Loop End. And what that will do, it will play this at the correct speed. And then when it reaches this point, it will loop back to the beginning. Okay, after we have done that, we're gonna come up to our match move. Now, this next step is important because we have the light handheld 60 frames per second video clip in here. But if I delete that, it is going to remove our match move and our analyze motion and everything. So we need to get rid of the clip without losing all of our tracking data. The reason we wanna do this is to keep our file size down um, and it'll also help our computer render a lot faster. Select your match move, come up to object and go down to convert to keyframes. You can also push command K. Now come over here and just push the convert button. And now it has taken all of that tracking data and put it into position, rotation and scale keyframes which is super important because now we can actually completely delete this original tracked clip 
and suddenly our file size is going to be a lot smaller, but it's going to maintain the tracking data. The next step is we want to get rid of the black edges that appear on the side with the tracking data. So that is actually really simple. Come up to your group, which is holding the effect source and um, set the scale up to something like 105. And that will crop in just enough to cut off those edges. Okay, we're just about done with everything here in Motion. The next step is to push Command S or come up to File and do Save. And we can just call this Handheld 35 millimeter. Come down and you can create a new category called Handheld. Then we will just push Publish. And then we will come on over to Final Cut Pro. Okay, so here in Final Cut Pro, I have this shot of my wife on the beach um, and I needed a clone shot for the story I was telling. But um, obviously the easiest way to do a clone shot is to set it up on a tripod. So I did that, but the shot is definitely very stagnant. So I wanted to fix that. So go ahead and drag your shot down onto your timeline and then go into your effects browser here on the side and go down to your new handheld category and we'll see the handheld 35 millimeter. Just drag that on over to your clip and now if we play through, we can actually see the handheld motion working great. And voila, you now have your own personal handheld motion that is actually a lot more realistic than what Final Cut Pro provides and, uh, and you can actually adapt the footage to whatever your scenario is. So if you want something more shaky, you can definitely do that. Or if you want it more subtle, you can just move your camera less and track that. Now, if we want to smooth this out just a little bit, we can do that easily. If we jump back over to motion, go to your effects source, go to your position tab here and go down to add parameter behavior average. What this will do is the computer will take all of these movement keyframes and average them out and it'll create a smoother shot, but still maintain all of your tracking data. So we'll push command S to save that, or you can come up to file and save. And we will go on back to Final Cut Pro. If you delete the effect and then reapply it, it will automatically come back with the smoother motion and we can just see the difference. And it's definitely a lot smoother. And if you go into motion, you can just drag that all the way to 20 if you want and get it to be as smooth as you possibly desire. But it still maintains that handheld field. Additionally, you can come over to motion. And if you don't actually like the rotation, you can come up to the rotation parameter and reset that. And it'll go to zero. And then we'll just drag that back on. And now it won't have any of the camera rotation that was initially captured. So that wraps up the tutorial side of this video. If it was helpful, consider pressing the like button. Now, I wanna show you this brand new plugin I created just for you that you can download for free down in the description. So I actually created six different focal lengths and each one provides a really unique movement pattern so that you're never working with the same handheld motion. And if you want it to be more realistic, you can work accordingly to whatever focal length you shot your video on. So let's say that we want a real minimal amount of motion. We could do the 18 millimeter and because that's why the motion's going to be um, a lot more subtle. And if we just play through, you can see what that's kind of doing. It's a real subtle motion. I actually also included the smoothness slider here and that will smooth it out automatically for you. And it still maintains some of that handheld motion. And then if we go to the middle of the spectrum, like 55 millimeter here, um, there's a little bit more handheld to it. And you can drag that smoothness slider up as much as you want or you can um, disable the crop to fit if you don't mind the black edges because you might be letterboxing your video or um, you can actually scale it yourself in Final Cut if you so desire. Or you might have some effect going on and you wanna keep as much of your frame in it as possible. And then lastly, we can jump on up to 105 millimeter if you really want a lot of hand motion. And uh, we'll go ahead and play through that. And you can see that just adds a lot more motion to the shot. And uh, you can actually enable or disable the rotation um, really quickly and easily with this checkbox. 
So if you don't want your camera rotating left and right, you can do that. And again, you can get rid of your, your crop to fit. You can drag the smoothness up. It's all up to you. I tried to give you as much control as possible without making it complicated. Also, if you want, you can actually jump into any of the handheld motions and you can see how I've set up the project yourself. Um, and you can replicate that if you so desire. So guys, make sure you download the free preset down in the description below. If you want me to check out your channel, I've been really loving all the comments I've been getting. So leave me a comment down below and I will be going through and watching everybody's channel um, that leaves a comment and I would love to connect with you guys in that way. If you liked this video and it was helpful to you, push that like button, subscribe. I have brand new videos every single Wednesday. With that being said, thank you so much for watching it really does mean a lot to me and i cannot wait to see you guys next wednesday